I'm finding my favorite espresso in San Francisco. Starting with the roasters in the city, I'll try 14 shops in this video. Let's get started. The first set pits four San Francisco staples against each other. First up is Sexton Coffee Roasters, who specialize in Ethiopian coffees. It smells vibrant. I mean, there's like a lot going on. It's strong. Mmm. Wow. That is exactly what an Ethiopian coffee tastes like in my mind. Very sweet, but tangy. There's a strong acidity, fruity, berry flavors. It's like a raspberry, but a very light raspberry, almost mixed with some grape, more tart flavors. It's got a hint of like orange peel, a little bit of almost like a spicy or citrus. The mouthfeel is very smooth. It goes down easily. There's not a ton of texture body to it. It's very clean, like really just crisp. Maybe pineapple, super unique. Really well done. I like this. <laughs> Heading to the Mission District, next up is Four Barrel Coffee. It smells like a classic espresso. Ooh, mmm. This has a flavor that I call sour that I really, really like. It's maybe like tart, but not bright. It's a very particular acidity, I think. It's really nice. It has a richness to it. It's almost buttery in its flavor. The texture is a little bit more rich than Sextant was. This one doesn't have a ton at the top. It's got a really strong mid-range. That tart, a little bit more sour acidity. There's a strong lemongrass flavor to it. And the texture is almost like chalky in a way that I really, really like. It feels like it's coating my tongue really well. And the aftertaste is quite pleasant. It fades into a sort of sweetness, like that tart, sour flavor fades away and you're just left with a really pleasant, very subtle sweetness. It's almost like a mango, a soft kind of sweetness. Mango or like banana, that's good. Linea Cafe is another mission staple. Ooh, dang, that smells fresh. I don't know how to describe that, like a freshly cut plant or grass. It smells like you walked into a, a nursery or a greenhouse. Ooh, dang, that is good. Wow, it has so much going on. Ooh, that's a nice car. Ooh, I would like that car. I would like to have that car. It's noticeably sweet up front, which is super unique. Usually there's like an acidity up front that fades into sweetness. This is sweet right away, but it still has that tart kind of bright acidity, crisp. It's so, it's, it's very sweet. Not quite as sweet as Barefoot back from the San Jose region, but this is sweet, but it's balanced too. It's got a hefty dose of the earthy kind of lemongrass flavor, but there's a, what is that sweetness? It's like blueberry, like really sweet blueberry, or maybe plum. It's like a deep sweetness, and it's still, it tastes so fresh. I'm not even sure how to describe what fresh tastes like, but this is unmistakably fresh. It's really clean. There's hardly any bitter aftertaste at all. There's hardly any bitterness even when you're sipping it. The texture is really pleasant. It, it feels nice and thick, like it's coating my tongue really lets the flavors kind of evolve over time. And even though there's so much going on, none of the flavors are competing with each other. Like I can pick out each individual taste really easily. It's clean, but busy at the same time. I've never really experienced that before. Last is Ritual Coffee Roasters, whose specialty instant coffee I've been using to create a sort of ultimate Dalgona coffee recipe. More on that later. Mm, it smells fresh as well. Oh, interesting. It's very light. Like it tastes fresh and airy, really clean. There's definitely that earthy lemongrass flavor. It has a solid acidity up front, but it's not too biting. It's reserved and tangy, maybe. It has like a deep fruit flavor, like a plum, maybe, or a black currant. It's fascinating how light it is on my tongue. It tastes really fresh. All right, let's talk winners. All of these were really good, and I'll totally be back to all of the places. There's a lot of freshness involved today. Really every place just tasted noticeably super fresh and clean and crisp. But the one that really stood out is Linea. It just had so much going on. It was so fresh, but it also had a lot of depth, a lot of body to it. It was sweet, but not overwhelmingly sweet, earthy, fruity. There was just a perfect balance of flavors. And honestly, it's one of the best espressos that I've had this whole time. Linea wins it for me.
Set 2 starts at Excelsior Coffee, a black-owned and motorcycle-friendly shop. Ooh, wow. That smells really tasty. It smells kind of sweet. Classic espresso, kind of a little bit of a sourness. Oh, wow. Ooh, that is really good. It's very sweet. It's sweet, it's kind of like a blueberry. This is the sweetest berry flavor that I've tried of all the espressos so far. It has a little bit of a roasty nuttiness, but not very much. Like, I wouldn't think of this as a roasty coffee, but there's like that sweet nut, like that blue moon sweet almond sort of vibe going on at the top too. It tastes noticeably fresh. The texture is more toward the velvety side. It's really delightful on my tongue. That really makes me want to drink more of it. <laughs> Heading into the Sunset District, next is Home Coffee Roasters. It smells like a super typical espresso. Just balanced, warm. Ooh, it's very bright and tangy. A really solid acidity up front. It's not like too much though. It's not a super strong bite, but it's very loud. After that initial attack of the acidity, it kind of fades into this tangy, little bit sweet. It's not sweet. I wouldn't say that this is a sweet espresso, but it does have sweetness to it. It is more earthy though, a kind of lemongrass, more earthy vibe. It's also citrusy in addition to that earthiness. Something like lemon, a, a pretty bright citrus. There's almost two different textures happening. One is fairly thin and it's like the top sort of layer, the first thing that I experience in the taste. But then there's also like a velvety kind of body underneath it. It's really interesting. I, I haven't experienced that yet. This one definitely evolves over time. Tangy though. If, if I had to describe it in a single word, tangy. Next is Andy Town Coffee Roasters, one of the first specialty shops in the Outer Sunset. It has a unique scent. I'm not really sure what that is. It's interesting. Hmm. It has a very delicate flavor. I'm getting kind of a roasted nut sort of vibe, but I will say the flavor is very delicate. It's really a contrast to home, which was a super loud, like really in your face sort of flavor. This is much more reserved. The texture is pretty soft, velvety, but again, the, the texture is also a little bit played down. It, it's velvety, but it's not very, very velvety. Just everything is kind of as if you turn down the volume on the taste experience. And that's not to say that it's bad. It's just a very different experience, and especially in contrast with home. The flavor is very balanced, like there's no one thing that's jumping out at me, and that makes me think it would mix well in a milk drink. Java Beach Cafe has a beautiful shop across the street from the ocean. They also had live music when I went, which has been a rare experience during COVID. Ooh, it smells kind of sweet. Sweet and nutty. It's a very pleasant scent. Interesting. This is similar to Andy Town in that the flavor is quite reserved. It's very mellow. There's almost no bite of acidity at the top. It's super smooth. Gosh, that's fascinating. It's so well balanced that it's really difficult to pick out any specific flavor notes. You know, it is one of the weaker shots that I've had. The texture is quite thin and there's just, there's even, there's less flavor to it. There have been espressos like Andy Town where the flavor is more reserved, but there's still definitely flavors there. This one just feels a little bit on the watery side. It's super, super delicate, really easy to drink, but it's almost lacking something to me. There's very little aftertaste too. It's just super mellow. Okay, let's talk winners. The last two that I tried, Andy Town and Java Beach, were both really, really mellow. And I imagine that they were a little bit darker roasted, and the way that the roasters are compensating for that really aggressive dark roast flavor is by bringing down the flavor a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how you would do that. I'm not a coffee roaster, but they both had that nutty, roasty flavor to them and were quite reserved. Like, they weren't very loud in their flavors. Home was super loud. I actually really enjoyed it. It had like a tangy bite up front that was really enjoyable and super intense. But Excelsior had the most depth of flavor. It had a really pleasant sweetness, but it wasn't overly sweet. It had a lot of different flavor elements and it was super well kind of mixed. And for that reason, Excelsior wins it for me. Set three starts at Jane on Fillmore. 
It's a shop with a clean, bold aesthetic. How's the coffee? Oh wow, that smells really nice. Warm and toasty. I'd love to wake up to the smell of that in the morning. Ooh, ooh dang, that's really good. <laughs> it has a pretty bright acidity, but it's definitely not biting. It's rich, it's, it's, there's a lot of activity on my tongue. And there's a little bit of tartness. It's not quite lemon. It's a little bit sweeter than lemon. Maybe like a nectarine. Yeah, there's like a dark quality to it. Not like a dark roast. Like caramel molasses, the nectarine instead of a lemon. Like it's just, it's as if you took like what I would consider like an archetypal coffee and kind of made it one notch darker in flavor. It has some earthy flavors too, like it, it's sweet, it's earthy, There's, it's very, very balanced in the sense that there's a lot of all of the flavors. It's a very active, really rich experience. It tastes super fresh as well. This is very, very good. St. Frank Coffee is named after St. Francis, who is the namesake of San Francisco. I got their Little Brother Espresso blend, but they also have a seasonal rotation of single origin coffees. It smells super balanced. Ooh, that is super interesting. There's an upfront sweetness to it. It has a very soft kind of velvety texture, but it definitely doesn't feel like a dark roast. I've only really experienced that velvety texture in very dark roasted espressos. This has that texture, but it has the flavor and complexity and depth of a really well-balanced espresso. There's some berry notes. It's kind of difficult to pick out specific flavor notes because everything is so balance like nothing no one flavor is louder than another flavor it's like if it was an audiophile it would be compressed or like limited so that everything is exactly the same volume in audio that tends to not sound very good but here it is quite pleasant it hits at the top and the middle and the base right away there's not a ton of evolution to the flavor over time because everything is just right there really solid right away the texture is my favorite part of this. It's it's so good. So smooth, velvety, rich. Yum. Cafe Trieste serves Italian style espresso in Little Italy. It smells very nutty. Ooh, that is very nutty. Hint of like an earthy flavor that's not quite nutty as well. Yeah, it's kind of like a grassy, earthy flavor. It tastes really fresh. Like you can tell that this came from a plant in a way. <laughs> It does feel like a darker roast. The flavors are a little bit more subdued. The texture is on the softer side. It's not like velvety creamy like some of them, but it definitely has texture. More floral notes than berry notes. I don't even know what that is. Like a rose or like how a lily smells is kind of how this tastes. It's a very subtle high floral note. There's hardly any aftertaste. It cleans up really nicely. Okay, let's talk winners. These were all good. And something that I'm noticing with a lot of the San Francisco roasters is that their coffees taste super fresh. Almost every place is noticeably fresh, more so than other places. And that's been really interesting to me. Cafe Trieste, I hope I'm at least close on the pronunciation, was a little bit of a darker roast, not super distinct in flavor. I imagine that it would mix well with milk, but as an espresso, it wasn't my favorite. The other two, Jane and St. Frank, both super good, really complex, a lot of depth, really enjoyable. Because Jane had so much going on in the flavor and it was so balanced at the same time, that was really impressive to me. I really like that rich flavor experience where there's a lot going on. And to get that richness of an experience with everything being so balanced, Jane wins it for me. After a rainy spring night, set four starts at Sight Glass Coffee in Soma. Ooh, wow, that smells really yummy. Mmm, kind of sweet but rich. Ooh, ooh, that is very good. <laughs> wow. The texture is phenomenal right off the bat. It's got a little bit of what I call a chalky texture, but it's very full and rich. It's not too dry. It's unique and it fills my mouth right away. There's definitely a sweetness. What is the sweetness like? It's more like cookies or like molasses, a kind of 
darker, heavier sweetness. Not not as bright. There's a hint of like a citrus, but kind of a dark citrus, like a blood orange. It's almost like a blood orange chocolate cake or like a dark chocolate with orange in it. It's really good. You know, the aftertaste turns a tiny bit sour. It's not too much and it doesn't linger very long. It's really, really nice. Full bodied. Yum. Folklore's Coffee Roasters was on my list, but they were thoroughly, if not permanently, closed. I'm hoping they can reopen as COVID restrictions lift. On to Wrecking Ball Coffee Roasters. The term third wave coffee is widely attributed to Wrecking Ball founder Trish Rothgeb, so needless to say, she and her co-founders have been in the game for a while. It smells a little bit less sweet than Cyclops, but it smells kind of rich and, and full. Ooh, yum. That's good. It has a similar texture to Cyclops. Very similar. The taste is a little bit different though. It's a little bit less sweet, more kind of balanced is what I would say. There's there's no flavor notes that are really jumping out at me right away. Man, that texture is so good. I really like that. There's a little bit more of a roasty quality here, but it's not overwhelmingly roasty. It's just kind of a pleasant sort of, maybe like a, a toasted walnut sort of vibe. The texture is maybe even a little bit more smooth than Cyclass was. There's just a hint of like a tobacco, smoky flavor. You really have to search for it though to experience that. Balanced is the overwhelming impression that I get. But again, it's very full and rich. It's a full experience in your mouth. It's also pretty clean. For being so rich, it's also very clean, meaning there's very little aftertaste. And what is there is quite pleasant. Next is Flywheel Coffee Roasters. It's set in the Haight-Ashbury district, which is famous for being a center of the hippie counterculture movement of the 1960s. It smells very similar to the others. Kind of full, a little bit of a hint of a dark sweetness. Mm, smells really nice. Ooh, wow, that's nice. Dang. The texture is a lot thicker. It's a little bit more syrupy, super rich and full. The flavor is super balanced, and it's very clean. It's even more clean than Wrecking Ball was. Very, very little aftertaste. It's not very acidic, but it has a sort of fruity sweetness to it, like maybe a plum or a very, very sweet blueberry. I wouldn't call it tart. It's a little more syrupy than chalky, but it still has a little bit of that chalky texture. Gosh, that's really yummy. There's a hint of like banana walnut that I'm getting. I really like that texture. Okay, let's talk winners. This one is pretty difficult to judge. The espressos today were super similar in texture. They all had kind of a chalky texture, which I really, really like. I enjoyed all the espressos a lot. And so I'm really splitting hairs to pick a favorite. Sight Glass was a bit on the sweeter side, had that sort of dark chocolate orange. It was really interesting and it's a unique flavor to any of the others that I've tried so far. But it, the aftertaste turned a little bit sour. Wrecking Ball just wasn't quite as intense as the others. So I'm not gonna pick it as my favorite, although I will totally be back there if I'm in the area. And Flywheel had the best texture in my opinion. I really like that thick, syrupy, very, very rich texture experience. It also had a very good flavor. It wasn't as sweet as Sight Glass, but it still had a healthy amount of sweetness. It was super, super balanced, very clean. It left very little aftertaste, but the texture experience is what I keep coming back to in my mind. The texture matters so much to me in my experience of an espresso, and Flywheel just clearly had the best texture experience. It had a great flavor, but the texture is really what makes me say Flywheel wins it for me. The winners of sets one through four are Linea, Excelsior, Jane, and Flywheel. Next, I'll visit some shops across the Golden Gate Bridge, as well as the non-roasters in San Francisco. Until then, stay tuned for more, and thank you for exploring with me.